Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today is November 15th, 2011. By a request from Twitter, we're going to take a look at this post on Mac Rumors from earlier today. As usual, you'll be able to find that link down below if you want to read some more. This is about uh, smartphone distribution. Today's ever-changing world, I think it's uh, pretty uh, relevant to look at um, what's going on with smartphones and what OS is. And this is a really great table here from third quarter 2010 in comparison to third quarter 2011 in terms of market share and percentage and um, the number of units sold. So uh, we'll talk about 11 first. Android, 60,000, almost 500 units. Very impressive, 52% of the market share. Due to the number of devices that run Android, I think we're going to be able to see Android OS ahead of pretty much anything, just like Windows is ahead of anything. It's most definitely not the best, at least in maybe my very altered uh, opinion, biased opinion rather, but um, it's, it's going to be up there as we could expect. Symbian uh, looks like it's number two with just about 20,000 units, about 17% of the market. iOS in a very uh, winning third place here with uh, 1,700 or 17,300 or so uh, units sold, which is about 15%, so that's pretty good. Keep in mind this is only uh, the iPhone 3GS, 4, and 4S since we're talking about the third quarter of 2011 here. Uh, so it looks like Android is up about 25%, or actually 27% in a year, and, and that's, that's phenomenal to give the competition to iOS to Apple to build better products, which they have and will continue to do. Um, and then with Symbian, it looks like we're down a substantial amount, about 20%. Android and iOS are going to emerge the leaders here, and possibly Windows Phone 7. As we see down below, Microsoft is now 1.5%. They were 2.7%, so it's kind of down in a year, kind of surprising. Uh, and then iOS is down about 1.6%, but up nearly 7,000 units. So that's interesting. They're making and selling more, but Android has just exploded with the number of devices that run it. And their marketing's getting better, the hardware they're using is getting better, and of course the software is getting better. So the competition is getting very strong. Second graph here is uh, what I thought, or what I found to be rather the more interesting one, the vendor market share smartphone operating profit. We've got 2006 through 2012 projection, obviously, here. Then we've got Nokia, Samsung, Motorola, LG, Sony Ericsson, RIM, BlackBerry, Apple, and HTC. Uh, you're probably going to have to look at the other graph that I have probably covered up my desktop with by this point uh, to be able to read the graph, and even then it's not very high resolution. Uh, but Apple is the purple color that gets larger on the right-hand side. Kind of looks like AT&T's five bars flipped upside down from an iPhone. Um, so we can see that Apple's profit is steadily gaining every year since the iPhone 1G uh, launch in 07. Uh, HTC has looks like they kind of topped out in 11. They're projected to shrink a tiny bit in 2012. It's I don't know how they can get that accurate with it. RIM, I think BlackBerry, they're always going to have some customers, mostly in the business market, that prefer their products due to their, I guess, suckishness. Businesses seem to like things that don't really work well, like HP uh, business class machines and Microsoft Windows XP Service Pack 2. Um, Sony Ericsson is nearly off the map. Uh, looks like they're actually a little bit bigger in the 2012 projection. So maybe they're going to come out with some new devices and push their OS a little further. LG, I don't even see it. Motorola, pretty big in 2006. Don't see anything since then. Uh, Nokia and Samsung. Um, actually, Samsung is doing much better than Nokia. Nokia has done nothing but decline as other uh, manufacturers build products that uh, I guess the consumer likes better. So it looks like the um, emerging winners in 2012, in terms of profit, will be Apple, surprise, surprise. Samsung looks like they're going to be doing pretty well. And then HTC and uh, RIM are going to be behind that. And then last place would be the Sony Ericsson. I think those are on a lot of uh, lower end, cheaper phones, um, maybe not on a contract and maybe not requiring data. I think a lot more people would have an iPhone if it didn't require a $20 or $25 a month data plan, at least with AT&T, it's $25 a month. Um, maybe Sprint's a little bit cheaper. But uh, I encourage you to come and read this article. Again, the link's down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you have. Let me know what you like. I know a lot of people like the iPhone, including myself. A lot of people don't like it. They want a bigger display. Uh, speaking of which, there was another post, I think it was here on Mac Rumors earlier today, about how the iPhone 5 was supposed to be the iPhone 5 with a larger screen, a different processor, stuff like that. 
it was somewhere over here so be sure to check that out while you're looking online you might as well check out our site we got a couple posts up yesterday what about the Optibay which is similar to OWC's uh, solution which is taking the DVD drive out putting in they call it the data doubler um, this is another version didn't look into the price I don't know and if you've got a first generation iPod Nano you may be in for a recall on a replacement by Apple so check out the site check out Tech and 5 it's our podcast it's on iTunes talked about that last week again thank you for watching subscribe to the channel if you liked what you saw and follow me on Twitter twitter.com slash James R. Schultz talk to you guys tomorrow